by Rabbeinu HaKadosh when he said that Torah Yutet, just that Rabbi Nathan, or that he found it after, or that he uh, heard it from Rabbeinu HaKadosh, Rabbi Nachman, after it. And this is, those are those Ashmatot. Ashmatot, Ashmatot how you can uh, translate Ashmatot, someone can say Ashmatot. It says additions to the, this lesson. Additions. Post for, post for. Appendix. No, not appendix. It says here, it says additions. You don't understand, so it's all good. So, Rabbeinu said, Uven lomed basefer, between the person that is learning in a book, leshomea mipia chacham, to the person that is hearing that thing from the wise person, from the tzaddik, yesh chiluk gadol beyoter, there is a very big difference. Kisefer urak lezikaron, because a book is just for memory. Kemo shekatuv, like that it's written, ketov zot zikaron basefer, write it down to remember it. Basefer, in the book, just that you're going to be able to go and to learn it again and to remember, remind yourself what you learned. Vazikaron, and the memory. The memory that we have is in the power of imagination that we have in our mind. In our neshama, in our body, we have the power of imagination. We can imagine things. That power is working for both two, for two sides. It's working that we imagine nonsense once in a while. It's happening. Once in a few years we imagine things that are not true. Usually we're like the prophets that we always know exactly what Bura Olam is telling us and go Hashem. So in the memory the memory is included in that power. That that power of imagine, he is the one that remembers things. <coughs> because also an animal, it's got a memory. Like that we can see. שגם בהמה זוכרת that also an animal can remember שבמקום זה נשחק כלב that in that place a dog bite it bit bit והיא בורחת משם so she's running from there every time she's coming to that place she's running, she's afraid she remembers that a dog bit her yes, bit her? over there? ועל כן אמרו רבותינו, and this is why רבנן, רבותינו, the חכמים, the wise, told us, זיכרונם לברכה, דברים שבעל פה, things that you learning by heart, אי אתה רשאי לאומרם בכתב, we're not allowed to write them down. תורה שבעל פה, we're not allowed to write it down. ויש דברים בגו. So it means that in the book we're writing things only that we're going to remember them. But there is a lot of more information that we're not allowed to write, so they're not written in the books. This is why there is such a huge difference between when you hear the tzaddik talks than when you hear, when you read his Torah that he wrote. Because when he's writing, he's just writing things that you're going to remember. What actually he said. But there is a lot more in what he said, a lot, a lot more in what he said than in what that he wrote. wrote. And it's very deep, that thing. Because really, that verse itself, that it's written, write it down to remember it in the book, it's been said on Torah Shebikhtav. It's written on the things that it's allowed to write them. Shetzrichin davka lechotva. Things that we need to write them. So how he is saying that he is actually teaching us, he is just, Rabbeinu is opening to us a window to understand that we cannot understand nothing. Because actually he used that verse that is saying that we need to write the things that we're supposed to remember. And he's talking actually that those are going to be the signs to teach us what was been given by heart. But actually that verse is talking about the things that we're allowed to write. So actually it's contradicting each other, each other. Because in the beginning he's explaining to us that he's showing to us 
in a sign what we're not allowed to write, but after it is saying that what that we're writing is just the thing that we're allowed to write. So, actually, we don't understand nothing. This is why Rabbi Nathan said, Ve'yesh dvarim bego, and it's very, very deep. For us, the main conclusion is that there is a huge difference between reading from the books and hearing from the tzaddikim. So if we have an option to go to hear a shiru from the tzaddik, it's a lot better, it's a lot more important. So it's very important to hear that, to know that. So, Rabbi Nathan is saying in those uh, round bricks, so Brackets. 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 This is what I wanted to say. Yes. I wish you go of shim parentheses. You're going to use that, Reza <laughs> Yes. What about listening from somebody else who heard it? So Rabenu said before that it's also a little bit lower. It's not like... It's tough, not... But it's in the, in the... To hear from the book, it's, it's the lowest. It depends in the book also, so you can understand. It can be that you're going to read from a book something that is a lot higher than if you're going to hear from the tzaddik himself. If that tzaddik is so huge, that his book is so huge, even though that it was a lot bigger to hear from him directly, but now to, to read from his book, it's better than to hear a shiur from a different tzaddik. It can be. It's, it's happening also. But, um, but still, to hear, Rabbeinu said before, to hear from a student, it's um, it's one thing, and then when you hear, here it is, in the last page, the second uh, paragraph in the last uh, two, the last... I'm referring to, like, is it asur to, to hear? It's not asur, chas shalom, it's lower, it's just lower. It's just lower, you cannot receive... If now, if now, Rav Shalom, for an example, he's saying something. If Rabbeinu HaKadosh said, En shum yehush ba'olam klal. Rabbeinu said, there is no despair in the world at all. Okay, when Rabbeinu said that, it contained all of the wisdom of Rabbeinu and all of the feelings that Rabbeinu had in that moment. Before of that, he was so down, he was so low, he was suffering so much for all of Am Israel. He saw the neshamot of Am Israel, what's going to be in the future, all of the generations, the Holocaust and the Internet Holocaust and all of the things that are going on. And he saw all of that and he was so close to despair, him, himself, with his pure eyes that he looked at the world and then at the future and then he said, it cannot be. And Yehush Ba'olam Klal, and he roared when he said it, he was screaming, he said, And Yehush Ba'olam Klal. So, the people that were there, that saw Rabenu, that he was so low, that he was so, he was suffering so much, and then he, he, he shout that, that, that verse, And Yehush Ba'olam Klal, it was amazing to see that, you, it, it was containing a lot more than what that you're going to hear in this generation, from a different tzaddik that heard it from me. Even if that tzaddik now is huge also, and he also contains a lot, and he also knows what he's talking about, it's not like when Rabbeinu said it in the beginning, for sure. And if you're going to say that, or, or I'm going to say that, it's going to be even lower. You understand? From everyone that hears that, it's going down another level, another step, another step. This is what Rabbeinu is teaching us. And when it's written in the book, it even contains less. Because in the book you cannot, there is a lot of things, Rabbi Nathan is bringing it in Likutei Alachot, that he is learning it from Likutei Moran, that Rabbeinu is saying that, um, 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 that the Tzadikim are teaching a lot of things with their move, that when they're moving their hands, they're, they're banging on the table, they're lifting their hands once in a while. They're doing things in the shoe that's going to show you something that is not in the text. You understand? In a, in a certain sentence, if you're going to read it, it's all going to be flat. But in the shoe, you saw that the tzaddik done something like that, and wow, you woke up because of his movement, because he moved his hand. You understand? This is the difference. So when you read a book, all right, you can read how many times we can, we can read the Kutem Oran, and we don't understand nothing. And when we're talking in a group, we're learning in Chavruta or something, suddenly you reveal things that you couldn't even understand that are written in the Likute Moran. And Rav Shalom said that all of his books, Begana Emunah, Begana Shalom, Sharab Betodah, all of those wonderful books are coming from Likute Moran. Where it's all written? 
look for it. Once in a while you're going to find a, a verse, a sentence that's going to show you that maybe Harab was counting on that when he write, wrote a whole chapter on, on a different thing. You understand? So, but he is finding it. But for us it's hard. So it's better to hear from the tzaddik himself than to read it from the book. Shiurim of Shalom Bayit, Shiurim of Arab Shalom on Shalom Bayit, Shiurim from, 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 from Arab Boide on Shalom Bayit. On, on. When you hear the per person that is talking, he is talking from his place, from his life, from inside, and he's going to put a lot more than what the, the world, words contain. This is, this is what Rabbi is coming to teach us. Okay, so. So. Rabbi Nathan is saying to us on that, Kol ze shamati mi piv. All of that I heard from his holy mouth, mi piv akadosh. Be'et she katavti lefanav Torah hanal. When I wrote the Torah in front of him, a lot of times Rabbi Nathan was sitting with Rabbeinu akadosh, and Rabbeinu was helping him fixing his tawyot, his uh, misunderstandings and things that he was he couldn't quite catch it like that Rabbeinu said it exactly or there is a lot of Torah that Rabbi Nathan just heard from other students that were there and he was Baruch Hashem doing something else in that time so he wrote it and then he was bringing those sheets to Rabbeinu and Rabbeinu was checking it a lot of times Rabbeinu was removing, erasing parts from Torah that he said things that he said, he said we're going to erase it, we're not going to write it Rabbi Nathan a lot of times he was writing it in a different place he, because he said it's important. I thought that it's important, so I put it in another place. And there is times that Rabbeinu add another part, like that part. When, Rab, when Rabbi Nathan was writing the Torah with Rabbeinu, after that Rabbeinu said the Torah, so Rabbeinu told him that thing also. So he wrote it. It wasn't exactly inside the Torah. So it's that Hashmata, Rabbi Nathan, put it inside. Velo be'er inyan When he's mentioning to us, that Rabenu didn't explain to him that subject well enough. He didn't explain it to him enough, so everyone can try to to find something in it. Okay. And this is the secret secret on what that Rabotenu said, Rabotenu Zikonalibaka in the Gmara Sanhedrin Lamit Khet. It's written, Adam Harishon Mashuk Beorlato Aya. Adam Harishon he had that, um, the, the, foreskin, foreskin, for for but it means that he had that, the, that gum of the desire, it was affecting, affecting him. It's not only that he was not mahul, I said mahul? Circumcised. Circumcised. Just also that he had his lacking in that thing. We know that he had his gamma breed. So, and also it's written, Adam Arishon, Belashon Aramit Siper. Adam Arishon, he was talking Aramit. He was not talking in Lashon Kodesh. It's written, Adam Arishon, Be Aramit Siper. In the language of Aramit, he was talking. And Rabbi Nathan is saying to us, Rabbeinu is saying to us, Vehaven Me'od. And you need to understand the connection between those two. Um, um, Things. Things. Because by the language of Aramit, that it's the language of translation, that we learned so much about it until now in the Torah Yutet. So that foreskin pulls a lot of his power. <coughs> that it's a general bed, the bed that contains all of the rest of the bed. Like we said, that, that desire, that lust for women, it's the fire that contains in it all of the other kinds, different kinds of, of desires, of lusts. The Tavat Niuf. So, because that we saw that now, that the, the Adam Arishon, he had his, in his level, Gamma Brit, he had that, this, last for women in his level of, of his Kedusha, very high level of Kedusha, but he, he had a lacking over there. Because of that, he, the, he was talking in Aramit. Because of that translation, this is that aspect. 
In that aspect, he was talking Aramit, like we said that the translation, it's an aspect of how you can... We said the translation is standing between the holy language, that is the Shona Kodesh, to the 70 languages. And the translation is that we're using one of those languages to say only Divrei Torah. We're saying Torah in that foreign language. So it means that it's like that layer of, of the fourth skin, that it's or, Orla, that the Yetzara is trying to pull the Kedusha through that layer. It's like the Etzada Tovera, that it contains both sides. Also the translation contains both sides. It's a different foreign nation language, and it contains the information that we're translating, that it's the Torah Kedusha. So the nations are trying to pull the wisdom of the Torah Kedusha through that language of translation by the fact that we are translating, but still our job is to translate because we cannot fix the Shona Kodesh if we're not translating, if we're not explaining the Chidushe Torah to people that are over there in the far places that we need to translate it for them, to help them, to get them closer, to get them inside into the Kedusha into the Kedusha. So those two things were inside of Adam Arishon. He was talking Aramit, and also he had that fourth skin. And this is how the Yetzirah was trying to conquer him, to fight against him, to pull his Kedusha. And we need to understand that carefully. Because by that language of Aramit, Shehu Leshon Targum, that it's the language of translation. Mashcha Veyanka HaOrla, so that Orla, that fourth skin, try to pull the Kedusha. Why? Because that fourth skin, Shehu Ara Kolel, Hura HaKolel, this is the bad of all bad. This last is the worst last, the worst desire that people have. So, that, that evil power tried to pull from him, his Kedusha, Mileshon HaKodesh, from his Lashon HaKodesh, because he, he knew Lashon HaKodesh, he was created by Lashon HaKodesh, but because that he had that gam, that lacking of gamma breed, he was talking Aramit. So because of that, that he couldn't talk Lashon HaKodesh anymore. He had to talk in Aramit. And because he was over there, that now he needs to talk Aramit. The klipa, the bad side, the dark side, try to control him, to conquer him, to pull his Kedusha out. Ayen Sham Look deep inside of that, over there in the Maram Sechet Sanhedrin. Someone wants homework? No? Okay, continue. Ki karp gamma brit, because the main gamma brit, the main lacking that we can have, Chas Shalom, on that matters of matter of Kedusha, Shehura Kolel, that it's a bad thing that is included all of the other bad things Bechinat Leshonot Amim. it includes all of the languages it's an aspect of all of the languages of the nations like we said that every nation she's got a certain bad midah bad uh, behavior lust that is holding her like we know that when Bore Olam offered the Torah to all of the nations so one of the nations said we cannot accept it because we want to murder and one nation said we don't want to accept the Torah because we want to steal and every nation with her Yetzara said we don't want because of that Yetzara and in every language of every nation they contain their bad midah, their character if you're gonna hit Chas Shalom here, the language of the nation that controlled by anger it's going to put anger inside of you by hearing their language. If Chas Shalom, that uh, nation is controlled by lust for women, Chas Shalom, you're going to hear the sound Chas Shalom of that, those kind of Diburim, and that last Chas Shalom going to get inside to that person's brain, heart, Chas Shalom. This is why we need to watch ourselves together to try to be in places that we cannot hear all of those languages. And if we don't have a choice just to use one of those languages, we need to use it for translation, just to talk Divrei Torah, just to use that language as a tool to bring the Divrei Torah out to the Galut to save Am Israel that are already there. We're using that language as a weapon 
to pull all of those poor people that fell into that nation uh, area. And now we're translating the Torah Kedusha and we're pulling them back with their language, with the thing that's familiar to them. They have to hear in that language. Go to friends and friends and try to talk to them uh, Yiddish. Nothing going to help to help to, to bring them into to the Kedusha. You cannot. You have to talk to them in their language. If you're going to talk in the language of them, only Lashon Kodesh, only Diburim from the side of the Kedusha, first of all, it's not going to damage you that you're using that language. And second of all, that it's also going to bring those sparks that fell into darkness over there. You're going to pull them back into the Kedusha. This is what Rabbeinu told us, that we cannot fix the Lashon Kodesh only by talking Lashon Kodesh. We need to have Shnai Mikra Ve'chad Targum, twice to learn and one to teach. Only by teaching you can bring all of those sparks that fell into those dark area to the twilight zone. Yes? Okay. Continue. Aboisa, where are you? Every day I need to do tshuva, I need to confess. Yesterday I sat with one of the friends, I told him, you know, don't know, you can never imagine where am I holding, how far I am from Kedusha. He told me, you don't need to tell me. I know, I done tshuva a few years after you, it's okay. My boy side, we're not forgetting where we're coming from. We're not forgetting, Baruch Hashem. Ki ikar p'gam abrit, because the main p'gam abrit, shehura kolel, that it's the bed that contains all kinds of bed. Bechinat leshonot ha'amim, that it's an aspect of the languages of the nations. Yenikatam al yedei leshon targum, they're pulling their power by the language of translation. The Aramit. Shehu bechinat noga, that it's an aspect of that layer that calls noga, that it contains good and bad together. Shal yedei zeh, that by that hem olim linok mil shon ha'kodesh. By that layer they're trying to, 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 to climb and to pull the Kedusha from the Holy Language, from the Shona Kodesh, Mi Brit Kodesh Kanal, from the Holy Language, from the Holy Brit, the, the Kedusha that we know. Like that Rabbeinu told us before, that when a person is asleep, this is the time that he's dreaming, and in the time of dreaming, so the imagination is dreaming, the imaginations are very, very strong, and this is exactly where the Yetzirah is trying to pull him into the Tuma, by Pgam Abrit, by Mikre Laila, that bad thing that is happening in Shalom at night can happen to the person when he's asleep, Chas Shalom, that the person Chas Shalom have that seed with no intentions, with no kavana, with no out meaning, Chas Shalom, Yetzirah is trying to come by that aspect of imagination, that aspect of translation that we learned right now. Only when the person is asleep. This is why we need to wake ourselves up all of the time to be awake because Yetzara can come to the person and Adam over Avera Ella Im Ken Nichnas Baruch Shtut. Only if he's crazy, only if he's in imaginations, if he's joking, if he's talking nonsense, if he's, uh, if he's not serious, if the person really decides that he's going to serve Hashem it Barach 24 7, he's not going to forget Hashem for one second and he's working on that. The person never gonna sin. He will never gonna sin. The Yetzirah cannot grab him. If you're watching your eyes and you're watching your thoughts and you're watching your mouth and you're wa watching your hands and you're doing only mitzvot and you're thinking, you're not gonna sin. Only sin is coming when you forget. When you forget Hashem, when you forget your eyes and you're wandering like Chas Shalom, a drunk person in the street, only then the Yetzirah can attack you. Yetzirah can conquer that person. Only when the person forgets. So, that bad is trying, that evil power is trying to conquer the person by that Lashonot Amin, by that language of the nation, the translation, and they're trying to, it's an aspect of Noga, and by that they're trying to pull the power of Kedusha from Lashonot Kodesh, because it's Kodesh Kanal, like we learned. Ki Ramat Kelav Anisayon, because the main test and changings that are happening and the free choice Noga. It's in those matters of that layer that calls Noga. Only there there is a test. If you know for sure that it's not allowed to murder, you're not gonna murder. But if you have a doubt, 
You know that the Gemara said that it's that the person that is insulting another person, it's like shofech damim. It's like that he's killing him, like that he's pouring his blood. Shalom. But you now you have a doubt. Maybe I'm rebuking him, and it's written that I have to rebuke him. So you have a doubt. So there you have the test. Over there in that place that it contains good and bad, the right thing and the wrong thing, and you don't know, there this is the main test of the person. In the situations in our life that we don't know what the answer is, this is the place that Bro Olam is checking us. This is the place that Bro Olam wants us to show him what is really we have inside, what really we have inside. If you trust Hashem, you're going to count on Hashem Idbarach, even that you don't see that there is a flow over there. You're going to step in the darkness, you're going to go into the water, even that the waves are still running, the waves are still coming, like Nachshon Ben Amin Adab. You're going to show that you trust on Hashem Idbarach. The time to show to Bore Olam is when you don't know what's going to be, when you have two options, should I do that or shouldn't I do that? I'm going to trust Hashem now. If it's not going to happen, I, I have that option. It's maybe going to come or maybe it's not going to come. This is your test now. If you're showing to Bore Olam that you're counting on Him, you're going to choose to count, to count on Him. You, all of your confidence is going to be on Hashem Barach and not on people, and not on proofs, not on checks, not on bills, not on money, not on nothing in account, on Hashem Barach. This is the time that you're going to show. This is the time that you're going to show to Bore Olam, where are you holding? What is really your level of Kedusha? If really you trust Hashem Barach, you're going to choose Kedusha. If not, you're going to choose all of those confidence that you believe that they can support you. In the end, Baruch Hashem, we learned and we're learning daily that there is no one to count on and only we can count on Bore Olam. This is the test. The main test is in the place of the, the main test of free choice is in situations that you don't know what the answer is. You don't know what's going to be the best. The best is to come to the yeshiva or to spend a few more hours with the wife now. What's going to be? Why, how going to tell? If to come to the yeshiva or to waste the time, maybe it's not wasting time. Maybe it's to support her and to help her. Maybe it's a bigger mitzvah now. How am I going to tell? Should I go to the yeshiva? I'm going to learn Torah. Where the parnasah going to come from? Oh, maybe it's going to come because that I'm learning Torah. But no, maybe it's time to go to work now. Maybe I cannot learn Torah. Maybe it's a miftah boged. Maybe I'm trusting on something that's never going to come. Oh, maybe I should go to do it bodedut. I'm going to dive into that. Over there, Bore Olam is testing us the most. This is the time to show if you're counting on Hashem Barach or that you're counting on yourself. And there, when the test is big, the gain is big also. If you have a big test and you're passing it with success, the gain is going to be huge. The gain is going to be huge. This is why a lot of times Bore Olam is putting us in situations that we don't know what to do. It looks like to go right, this is the right thing. And then you're trying, you put one step and you see that it's wrong. What are you going to do now? So you're saying, all right, I'm going to go to the left. You're going, making one step to the left, nothing is there. The tzaddikim are all in the right side. You say, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to choose. You're going to choose. If you're going to choose right, you're going to climb. If you're not going to choose right, don't worry. Bore Olam loves you enough that he's going to show you that you're wrong. This is why we need to daven. Bore Olam, show me the path. Show me the way. Like David HaMelech was davening. Hadricheni ba'amitecha. Let me see the truth. Lamdeni chukecha. I want to learn your rules. I, not, I want to know how to choose myself. This is the tzaddikim. They're giving us the power to choose ourselves. This is the power of the tzaddikim. That they're helping us to choose, to learn how to believe in Hashem Barach ourselves. This is the thing. If just you're going to go by the advice, by the books, it's not it. You need to make it yourself. Zohar Torah Adam. You need to be the Torah. Why Talmid Chacham? We need to honor him because he's a Sefer Torah that is walking. He's a Sefer Torah Me'alech. It's a live Sefer Torah. You need to make the rules of the Torah Kedusha. You're going to be a Sefer Torah yourself also. We need to make the Chukim. We need to make the Mishpatim. We need to make them all. We need to do them. If we're not going to do them and just they're staying in the book, all right, so you're learning and learning and learning. Borei Olam didn't give the Torah to the angels. 
He didn't give it to the angels. Why? Because the angels cannot make nothing. They're not creatures in this world. They doesn't have a Yetzirah. He gave the Torah to us that we're going to deal with the Torah, with the tool that calls Torah Kdosha in darkness, inside of the most most filthy places. Bro wants us to remember him, wants us to take those advice and to use them in places that we don't know what to do, that we have too many options. Rabbeinu is saying that when you have only one option, it means that you are with Hashem, because Hashem is one. But when you have options, it means that you are far from truth. Because emet, truth, there is only one. But lies, there is a lot. This is plastic cup. You can say the truth, it's only a plastic cup. But to lie, you can say how many lies that you want. You can say that it's made out of stone, made out of iron, made out of, uh, I don't know what, clay. You can say whatever you like. You can say whatever you like. It's lies, it's options. So if a person is standing in a situation and he's got two options, he needs to dive in on truth. He needs to dive in the Borei Olam, going to show him the truth. What is the truth? I want, don't want to choose the right way, the good way, the, the way that I'm going to succeed. No, this is lies. All of those are lies. The truth, Borei Olam, what's going to please you? What is the truth? What should I do? What should I put? Which kind of effort I should I should put in the, in that sugya in that situation? I'm looking for the truth, Borei Olam. And if you say that you have a lot, a lot of confusions. This is time to do tshuva on lies. It's time to do tshuva on the fact that you're not with Hashem. When you're with Hashem, you know the truth. Chotamo shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Emet. The signature of Borei Olam, it's truth. A person that is a person of truth, he always knows what Hashem wants from him. He knows. It's, a, it's simple. It's the truth. This is this. This is the right thing to do. He's an honest person. He knows what to do. But when the person is chas shalom, he's a liar, he's lying a lot, and he's telling stories to everyone by what he needs to do, he's standing in, in, in sections, he doesn't know what to do. Intersections? Intersections. And he doesn't know which path to choose. Why? Because he created those patterns. He done that to himself with all of his stories, with all of his lies, with all of his things that he was inventing, creating. He created other truths. Chas shalom. There is nothing like that. And when you're standing in that, only thing, do tshuva, dive into Borolam, Borolam, let me see the truth. I'm looking for the truth. I'm sorry that I was lying. I'm sorry that I was creating all of those options for myself. It's not an option. The truth is one. You are giving the parnasah. You are here with us. You can hear my prayers. You can help me. You love me. This is the truth. All of the rest are lies. Lies. You wanted to be lazy, so you were counting on your father. You wanted to be uh, spoiled, so you were counting on your mother. So now it's an option. Maybe I'm going to count on my father. No, no, you cannot count on him. Maybe I'm going to count on my mother. No, no, you cannot count on her. If you're going to try, you're going to see that you cannot. Why? Because Borei Olam loves you. The person that Borei Olam loves him, Borei Olam rebuking him. Et asher yohav Hashem yochiach. The one that Borei Olam loves is rebuking him, he's showing him that he is wrong. This is the biggest present of them all, that Borei Olam is showing to you that you are wrong, that you're silly, that you're not that wise, that you're not so successful, that you're stupid, that you have lusts, that you have desires, that you're a liar. It means that Borei Olam still have hope from you. He knows that you have the power to fix yourself. If you were a person that cannot fix yourself, Borei Olam was saying, all right, let him enjoy this world. And, and if he doesn't have the world to come, he cannot fix himself. Enjoy in this world. This is how Borei Olam giving all of the Shefa to the Goyim, to the Reshaim, you see Reshaim driving uh, Mercedes Benz, I don't know what. That's what they drive, the Germans. The Germans driving in their Mercedes, exactly. Why? Because you know, it's a lie. It's not going to last. It's not going to stay forever. It's not an eternal, uh, endless success. It's not. It's not. This is why Borei Olam says, all right, you may be done something good in your life, so enjoy, so eat and drink and be happy, because tomorrow you're going to die. Just like that. But for us, that Borei Olam loves us so much, He's giving us a lot of hard times. A lot, a lot of hard times. Rebuking us on every step that we're making. 
You're trying to learn, it's not the right way to learn. You're trying to daven, it's not how you should daven. You're trying to work on your Shalom Bait, you know, you're useful in Shalom Bait. You want to educate your kids, it's the worst way to educate your kids. But Olam is rebuking us, that we're going to learn. Because he believed in us, like, that, like, like we're saying in Modani, in the morning we're saying, Rabbi Munatecha. Your faith is huge, is large. What it means that your faith, what? Borolam in what he needs to believe? In himself, in the Torah, Dosha, he needs to believe. He knows it all. He doesn't need to believe. He believes in us. He believes in us. He believes, this is why we're thanking him, that you woke me up today in the morning because you believe in me, that I still have hope, that I still can fix myself. You believe in me and you're supporting me. I have a chance to fix myself. You believe in me and I'm trusting on you that you're going to help me. And this is what we need to understand, that Borei Olam is rebuking us only because he believes that we can deal with it. This is why we know that a person never have tests, that he cannot stand in those tests. And if you feel that you cannot stand in that test, it means that you don't understand what the test is. You don't understand what it means to hold on. To hold on, it doesn't mean to dance and to sing and to have money. To hold on, it means not to forget Hashem Itbarach for a second. A person can hold on in the worst situations of them all if he just holds on with Hashem Itbarach. He remembers Hashem Itbarach and with that thing, he's going on all of his life. All of his life. There was one person that survived in, in Auschwitz camp for four years. Four years in the Holocaust he was there in, in, in because of one thing. He saw one time a certain tzaddik, I don't remember his name, that he was smiling to him. He told him a chizuk. He gave him one sentence of a chizuk and with that he was going all of the Holocaust because he knew that there is someone like that. Because he saw a tzaddik one time that was a smiling to him, that was uh, cheering him up and he got something so important for him, from him he saw that there is a light in this world, it helped him to go through all of the darkness, Gates al Mavet, in the valley of death, with all of the dead people, all of the suffering, all of the hunger, all of the sadness, all of the bitterness over there, only with that memory. Memory that there is good in the world. For, for that kind of good, it's worth it to live, to survive, to hold on, even though that Nothing, there is nothing over there. There is nothing, but there is something to remember. Like we learned about Yosef HaTzadik. What made him so happy? That there is Borola. He didn't have nothing. No family, no hope, no future, no Torah, no Tfila, nothing, nothing. Why is happy? Why is surviving? Because there is Borola. He's holding the fact that someone is watching him. Someone loves him, someone is taking care of him. Even that it's totally darkness, totally darkness. With that memory, like Rabbeinu said, Baruch Shelo Asani Goy, that we're thanking Hashem in Bav, that we're not Goyim. With that fact that you're a Jew, that you're not a Goy, with that thing you can you can survive forever. Even if you're not making none of the mitzvot. You're not putting in, you're not keeping Shabbat, you're not watching your eyes, nothing. But you're not a Goy. You're not a Goy. All Israel chose you from all of the nations. He could brought your neshama as a, nesh as a goy. This is why we're saying every day, Baruch Shel Asani Goy. If that thing of Baruch Shel Asani Goy, it was one time that Borolam just created us as Jews, so say it one time in your Bar Mitzvah, in the Brit Milah, Baruch Shel Asani Goy, and this is it. But you see that we're saying Baruch Shel Asani Goy daily, it means that every day, and it's not bracha lebatala, it's not an empty bracha. It's a bracha that counts. Why? Because every day the neshama, every night the neshama is going up. And there is a trial in heaven. And if the neshama is crying and she's saying, I cannot bear that person anymore. I cannot stand being with him another day. I'm suffering. But Olam, he can find mercy on that neshama and not to send that neshama of a Jew back into that person. He can tell her, all right, my daughter, sit with me. It's okay. You don't need to suffer anymore. He's going to suffer without you. And that person become to be a goy. You can see a person learning in the shiva for 15 years, and after 15 years, he's throwing away the beard and the perot and the kippah, and he doesn't care about nothing else anymore. He lost his neshama, just like that. It's hard to say, but it's reality. It's reality. A person can, can, can fall, has shalom into those situations. 
There is a story about a Baal Shem Tov that one time a student came to a Baal Shem Tov and was crying, told him, I saw Avram and Moshe that they were fighting, that they were arguing, arguing and they were hitting each other and he was crying. He told him it wasn't Avram and Moshe at all. A Baal Shem Tov told him it wasn't Avram and Moshe. He told him, I saw it was Avram and Moshe. He said, no, it was Andre and Alex or uh, I don't know what. He told him, what? I saw it was them. He said, no, no, no. A Jew can never sin. When a Jew is trying to sin, chas shalom, the neshama is running away. And the neshama of a goy, the nefesh, the soul of a goy, is dressing in that person. And it was Andre and Alex that were fighting in the body of Avram and Moshe. But actually the neshama of Avram and Moshe cannot sin. Can never sin. A Jew can never sin. You see yourself, chas shalom, that you're sinning? You're acting like a goy. It's not, it's not empty. You are Chas Shalom. In that situation, you have an Eshama. It's demons, it's, it's Mezikim. It's darkness, it's powers of darkness that controlling your body now and using you now. It's frightening. How you got to that situation that you're angry that all of the powers of hell are controlling you? Kol HaKoes, Kol Mine All of the powers of hell can control the person that is angry. And it's written in the books that it needs a lot of mercy in the Zohar Kadosh that the Neshama is going to go back to a person that was angry once. What's going to be? We need to do tshuva. You find yourself that you're acting like a goy, that you envy, that you hate, that you want to kill, that you, you want to lie, that you have lusts and desires, you want to enjoy this world. It's not you. It's not you. It's your Yetzer Ara. We need to separate, to understand, this is not me. This is my Yetzer Ara. I have a Yetzer Ara. It's not me. Borolam gave me a Yetzer Tov and the Yetzer Ara. And now I lost my Yetzer Tov. I understand, Yetzer Tov is not with me, Chas Shalom. Now, I have Yetzer Ara. What I'm going to do? I'm going to doubt it. I'm going to ask. Il Malak Kadosh Baruch Hu Ozo Eno Yecholo. Without HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you cannot win the Yetzer Ara. Only with the help of Bore Olam you can win the Yetzirah, you can conquer, you can beat Yetzirah. Only with his help. How are you going to get his help? By listening to his advice, davening, doing tshuva, asking him for his help. It's the simple way of them all. Also by confidence, by, by remember Bore Olam and saying, Bezrat Hashem, it's going to be okay. That confidence can open huge paths for you. Just to believe, Borei Olam is going to help you, even without davening, even without asking a word from Borei Olam, just you believe that he's going to be there with you, he's helping, he's with you. Borei Olam is a melech asur berhatim, he's a king that he's attached to you in your thoughts, in your brains, he's berite mochin, in your thoughts. In the edges of your brain, Borei Olam is attached to you. The tzaddikim are tying between us to Borei Olam in our thoughts. All of the time, they're doing ties. All of the time, tying between us to Borei Olam, attaching. Attaching us to Borei Olam. So now Borei Olam have to go. He he's, you are his chariot. You are his holy chariot of Borei Olam. Borei Olam have to go by you. If you're going somewhere, Borei Olam is with you. Now you have a neshama. You can breathe. You, can, you are alive. You want to go to the filthiest place in the world. You're going to go, Borei Olam going to be there with you. He doesn't have a choice. He doesn't want to go there. He's a prisoner. He's your prisoner. He's your prisoner. He's <coughs> going with you. He made an oath for that neshama that she gonna, that she going to be with that body until he's going to break that oath. The neshama is going to be there. And that neshama is the neshama elokit. It's part of Hashem Yitbarach. So Hashem Yitbarach is with you and he doesn't have a choice. Now use that. <laughs> we need to use that. We need to understand that Borei Olam is with us. Try not to go to this, those places. If you see that you are going, apologize. It's the minimum. Apologize. Say to Borei Olam, I'm sorry. I regret Borei Olam that I'm taking you with you, me, with me to all of those filthy places. Bechol tsaratam lo tsar. In all of their troubles, in all of their bitterness, Borei Olam is suffering also. Why? Because he's there. Because he loves us. Because he loves you, he doesn't remove his hands from you. He doesn't remove his eyes from you. Doesn't remove his heart from you, his love from you. He's with you 100% of the time. 100%. And we think that we have mercy on other people, that maybe we're going to help them. We, we have mercy for two hours a day, for one hour a day, for 20 minutes a day to be with that person. Bo'olam is with him 24-7. 
We have to trust on Hashem in Baruch that He knows the best. And we need to try to cancel our will to Borei Olam, to listen to His voice, to go by His advice, by the Tzadikim that are showing to us His advice, because they can they are the middlemen that are explaining, they are translating for us, like Moshe Rabbeinu was translating to Am Israel the will of Borei Olam. We cannot hear directly from Borei Olam. We need to listen to the voice of the Tzadikim, to hear their advice, to go with that advice, and to succeed big time, boy son. Succeed big time. Yoga, this is it for today.